Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today what I'm going to be bringing you is a Bradford City versus Leighton Orient match preview now just before we get into today's video if you could drop a like on today's video let's try and go for 50 likes on today's video I'm going to set you a big target because you guys absolutely smashed the support on the last match preview that's got nearly 60 likes for a match preview that is absolutely insane so thank you so much for the support on that the vlog as well is closing on 100 likes so if you haven't already checked that out make sure you go check that out from our massive 2-0 win away to Cheltenham Town subscribe if if you are new as well, I am trying to hit 5,000 subscribers before the end of the football season. So if you could subscribe, that would be massively appreciated. I know there's like 50-60% of you guys who watch these videos and you aren't yet subscribed. If you don't have a YouTube account, just create one. It takes two minutes to subscribe and it helps me out massively. But that's all the housework that you need to do at the start of a YouTube video. Today, we are going to be previewing tomorrow's match at home to Leighton Orient. Big news came out of Bradford City this morning as well. Mark Truman and Connor Sellers have penned a deal until the end of next season as joint Bradford City managers, which is fantastic, fantastic news. My full thoughts and reaction to that will be coming out on Wednesday. So make sure you tune in for that 5pm, the usual time, for the videos that aren't vlogs. But today, as I said, we're previewing tomorrow's match at home to Leighton Orient. It's going to be a tough one, but make sure you leave a like and subscribe and let's get on with today's video. So my team, Bradford City, we're currently sitting 13th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 27 games, we've now got 10 wins, 7 draws, 10 defeats, 31 goals scored, 31 goals conceded, which leaves us on a zero goal difference and 37 points. It would be interesting to see when the last time we didn't have a negative goal difference was. It's got to be sometime around the start of the season, I'm going to presume. It's also nice to see that we no longer have as uh, more losses than wins, you know, that's both equal now on 10. Our last couple of games then been a win, a win, a loss, a win and a win. Compared then to Leighton Orient, they're currently seen two places above us in 11th place. After 28 games, they've now got 11 wins, 6 draws, 11 defeats, 35 goals scored, 30 goals conceded, leaving them on a positive 5 goal difference and 39 points. Their last couple of games have been a draw, a draw, a draw, a loss and a loss, so they're not in great form at all. Their last couple of games have been a 1-1 draw at home to Port Vale, a 0-0 draw at home to Colchester, a 0-0 draw away to Crawley Town, then had a 2-0 defeat away to Bolton, a 1-0 defeat at home to Forest Green, then their last win was on the 16th of January, which was a 2-0 win at home to Markham. The game before that that they actually played was two weeks before on the 2nd of January. They actually beat Salford City 1-0 at home, so that's a big result for that for them. But they're not in great form at all at the moment. No wins in their last five. We're four wins in our last five. We picked up 24 points from our past uh, 11 games. I think it's 23 points as well from our past 10. We're in some absolutely fantastic form at the, mo uh, at the moment. Matt Truman and Connor Sellers, they absolutely deserve that new contract that they have been given. You know, a big shout out to them and you know it's good to see that Ryan Sparks has put faith in them and uh, rewarded them with a new deal. The Bantams will be looking to make it three wins on the bounce. Back-to-back -back home wins is what they're looking to achieve. It's going to be a tough one, you know, there's no easy games in this league. It will be Classic City to obviously go and beat Cheltenham Town and then probably end up losing like a scrappy 1-0 to Leighton Orient. But under Truman and Sellers, I have all the confidence, you know, hopefully there's no curse of now that we've appointed them as full-time managers that we go on a stupid losing run now. I can't really see that happening though with the form we're on with the players we've got. I really can't see that happening at the moment. In terms of a score prediction, obviously it does depend massively on the teams. I'm going to go with a 2-1 to Bradford. I think it's going to be a bit of a tough game and I can see us maybe you know, conceding another stupid goal like what we conceded against Markham, which is kind of a freak goal. You know, They might even score from a penalty. I don't think it'll be you know, the most prettiest of games. You know, It's never a pretty game on a Tuesday night in League 2, but I'm going to go with a 2-1 to Bradford. In terms of goal scorers for us, I think Andy Cook's going to get another goal. I do think he will start again tomorrow night. And I'm also going to go with Gareth Evans to get another goal for the Bantams. I'm not sure how many he's got so far this season. I think he's got two. They both came against Southend, so he'll be looking to add to his account in this game. In terms of a team then, if I was to give you guys my team what I would play, obviously rotation is key in this league with the amount of Saturday Tuesday games we've got coming up. We are going to have to start rotating. And I think in goal, it's got to be Sam Hornby once again. Kept a clean sheet at the weekend. You know, didn't really have much to deal with, and that's a massive credit to the defence. I don't really think you can drop him for... Because if he gets dropped, it's going to be, you know, very very low chance that he does get back into this side. I'm sure O'Donnell knows that he's, he's not he's not number two by choice. It's kind of like he got injured and now he has to wait his turn to get back in to the starting eleven. He's gonna have to wait until Hornby. You know, there's a massive cock up, and I can't really see him doing that with the form that he's in at the moment. You know, he's been solid. You know, he looks pretty comfortable on the ball as well. He can kick it very far. You know, even he doesn't do any of this messing about. You know, take a touch, maybe try play it out. You know, if the ball's coming back to him, he just absolutely hammers it up the pitch, and I do like that about Sam Hornby. So for me, he has to stay in between. Between the sticks, right back.
back once again it's got to be Anthony O'Connor absolutely fantastic since he's moved over to that right back position you know you can't really tell that he's a centre back by trade at Bradford City I know he's played there before but he's been absolutely fantastic so he has to start there for me, you know, we'll keep the whole back four the same. You know, we, you can't break up that back four. You know, Paul O'Connor and Niall Canavan at the weekend, once again, absolutely fantastic. They dealt with the threats that Cheltenham Town offer. You know, the long throw. Paul were winning everything. Canavan winning everything. When they brought Andy Williams on, he's a big physical threat. You know, he didn't. He was kept pretty quiet. He had a chance near the end. Paul threw his body at it and put Andy Williams off, and he blazed a chance over the bar. Connor Wood missed the consistent. Thought he was pretty decent again at the weekend. In terms of defensive midfielders then, I thought Elliot Watt was fantastic once again. You know, his passing ability was absolutely fantastic. There was a, an interesting moment in the game when he got booked where he's running towards the ball. Referee runs across him so he can't get to him. The Cheltenham are then on the attack with like a three on two. So Elliot Watt has to take him down. You know, it was really poor from the referee. He got in Elliot Watt's way and then didn't even move. Like he kind of ran across him and then stood there. So Elliot Watt like barged into him, which obviously meant he couldn't get to the ball. But Levi Sutton also has to start for me. Next to Elliot Watt, you know, as always, his energy is absolutely fantastic in that midfield. And you can tell when he's not on the pitch that we do kind of lack a little bit of energy in that midfield. In terms of the attacking midfielder role, it's got to be that man, Callum Cook, once again. Absolutely superb once again at the weekend. Two more assists to his account. I'm not too sure what he's on now, but he's been absolutely fantastic since moving in to that slightly more attacking role under Truman and Sellers. You know, obviously, as I said, two more assists. Great corner for the first goal. And it's a nice little chip ball over the top for Andy Cook to get onto for the second goal. In terms of the right wing, then, I think you've got to start Charles Vernon once again you know he had his chance at the weekend he thought he was a bit quiet at the weekend but when you're playing against the fire back it's kind of hard to get your wingers into the game but when he did have the ball you know he was looking to get at Cheltenham, looking to drive past their players, create chances so I think he's got to start once again for me. In terms of the left hand side then Evans, you know, he's pretty decent defensively, but going forward, I kind of felt he was a bit hesitant. He was seen to drop deep whenever Wood got the ball, and I don't really like that about you wingers. And I do think Evans has been in some pretty decent form recently, but just for rotation and all that sort of stuff, you know, we're at home, Leighton Orient aren't the best team in the world, you know, they're doing well for themselves, but they're not in great form. I think someone like an Ollie Crankshaw could come in for this game, and I would like to see Crankshaw start for this game, go a bit more attacking. You know, try and get at them with a bit more pace. I think Crankshaw's definitely faster than Evans. So I'd like to see Oli Crankshaw start. Not necessarily not, not necessarily because I think Gareth Evans has been pretty poor recently. I just think Crankshaw offers a bit us a bit more attacking oomph, if that really makes sense. You know what I mean? Evans is better for the away games or the games where we're against, you know, tough opposition. But I think Crankshaw's better at home when we're playing not the strongest opposition in the world. I know they're above us in the table, but in terms of the form, they're winless in their last five. We won four out of our last five. So I think you've got to start Crankshaw for me. The striker position is going to be a massive debate amongst the fan base let me know down in the comments below as well as your score predictions who do you want to see start do you want to see Andy Cook start do you want to see Danny Rowe start I think for me it's got to be Andy Cook you know you can't drop somebody who's got a brace at the weekend granted he's not played that much football this season you don't want to be playing him Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. I know we did end up bringing him off. I thought that was a bit harsh to bring him off. I'm saying he was on a hat trick, but you know, in Truman and Sellers, we trust. You know, it would have been nice to see him get a hat trick. I thought when he had the chance, you know, when he, he took it around the not took it around the keeper, the keeper like went for the ball. Cup got there just before him, and the referee gave a foul. I think it was. It might have been offside. One of the two. Andy Cook nearly got his hat trick, but yeah, I think Andy Cook will start. And they want to see him start. It would be very harsh to see him dropped. Even though, you know, if he's just got a brace at the weekend, it would be, you know, be very harsh and a bit cruel on him if you were to drop him. That then would leave on the bench Richard O'Donnell. Uh, I'm not too sure how far away Bryce Asana is. I think he's going to be back in training in a couple more days, which is big news for us. But you could also have Matty Fold, Reese Taunton could even make appearance on the bench. You could have Kean Scales, Harry Pritchard if he's back from injury. Not too sure how long Billy Clark's going to be out for, but you could also have, you know, Burrell, Evans, uh, Donaldson, Danny Rowe. You know, you've got a lot of options at the moment. Um, I just don't really see how. Donaldson gets back into this team to be honest with you and I, I do think he will sadly retire at the end of the season but he's probably our fourth maybe even fifth choice striker right now he's not really getting that much game time I mean he is 36 37 I'm not really too sure how old he is but he's he's quite old now and he's not really getting that much game time I do feel a bit bad for him you know because this is his club but when he has been on the pitch he's not really done it that lot a lot to be honest with you so it's been a bit disappointing but this is not a video where we talk about why I think Clayton Donaldson um, deserves a bit of sympathy but anyway that's where I'm going to leave today's video if you have enjoyed as always a like would be massively massively appreciated subscribe if you are new as well i am trying to hit 5,000 subscribers for the end of the football season 
Get your score predictions down in the comments below and I will remember to include as many as possible, if not all of them, in tomorrow's vlog. Like I said, if you haven't already checked out the vlog from Saturday's game away to Cheltenham, make sure you go check that out. Follow my Twitch link down in the description below and now after this video goes live, I'm going to be live streaming over on there. I'm going to be drawing a giveaway as well, so make sure you enter the giveaway if you haven't already. I will actually put it in the comments of this video. I, yeah, I forgot last time, but there will actually be one in the comments of this video, so make sure you go over there and enter that. But anyway enough of the self-promotion and waffling i'll see you all in the next video peace